So in this lesson, we're going to look at creating our player. So we've already got our scenes made, and now we just need a player to kind of go in there and move around the scenes. So in this first lesson, we're going to keep it very, very simple. In a future lesson, I will kind of add to this and make it more, more improved. But we're just going to look at creating a player scene. We're going to look at creating the nodes that we need for that scene. And then we're going to add the script for the player so that it can move left and right and jump. And then we're going to finally add it to the levels. So hopefully it shouldn't take too long, but let's let's get cracking with this. So here we are on level one. So the first thing we need to do is create a scene just for our player. So if we go scene and then go new scene. And now the scene that we want to do is going to be adding a new node and the one we want is this kinesmatic body 2d so this will allow our player to collide with the floor so that's why we're going to use this particular node so if you search for it kinematic body 2d and then double click on it and that will come up there the next thing that we're going to need to do then is add our character image so if we press the plus button and we just add our usual sprite now for now i'm just going to use the kind of basic icon for Godot um, but if you wanted to or in a future lesson we will look at adding the player it does get a bit more complex when you add this player because you can animate it which is awesome but, so we're going to leave that for this lesson we're just going to look at using this standard icon so let's drag the icon onto the texture slot and then we have our character we can zoom straight into this and make sure we can see it so let's call this player and let's call the sprite body. Uh, it doesn't really matter what you call it, but we are gonna need it to be called something in order for us to save it. So I'm just gonna call it player body. Now, the next thing we need, so we need to select on this top node. Now we need to add our collisions. So if we press this play, play button again, so that it can collide with the floor, we do need a collision shape 2D. So the collision shape 2D, you can type it in and get it from here again. So collision shape 2D and make sure it's added directly below so everything should be below not indented okay and then it does say let's add a shape to it so later on we might use the capsule for our character it'd be a bit more suited but for now we're just going to use this rectangle once again remember do not touch these outside dots they will mess up all of your collisions it's these two inside ones that you want to move so click on the inside one and drag it upwards click on the inside one and drag it to the right until you're happy so I've covered my whole shape so it will collide with the floor wherever it hits um, we have one more thing to do and that is to add a camera so let's click on the player again and let's add our camera so we've got camera 2d so if you type camera 2d it will come up in the list there is one thing we need to do so let's just drag this to the top of our list and we just need to make sure that the camera is used rather than the scene. So when the scene is in full action, it will use the camera. So there is a button down here. So under the camera 2D, you have this current. And if you turn this on, it will overwrite the original, the scene that, the, sorry, overwrite the original screen that comes with the, the scene, okay? Or with the level two. So now you can see that it's going to inherit this. So let's save our scene. So scene, save scene. Mine's called player, so save it again. It's gonna go in this root folder, which is fantastic. So we've added our nodes, we've added the player scene. The next thing we need to do is add the, um, add the script to make it move left and right. So if we click on this player node here, and the script does have to be applied to the very top, okay? Do not apply it to any of these, otherwise it won't inherit the kinematic body 2D element. So once we have it selected, let's click on the script icon. Make sure it all says what we need to. So it's going to be a GD script. It's going to be a kinematic body 2D, which is what the node is. And it's going to be saved in our um, root folder as player.gd, which is in here. So we can press create and it's going to do all this for us. Now what I'm going to do is just delete everything apart from that very top line. Now to save me a bit of time and to make this video ever so slightly shorter, what I've done is I've actually um, copied and pasted this in so you can just copy and I'll show, show you what it does and you can just copy it so if you want to pause the video now and copy all this in that's fine but let me just show you a few like pitfalls that you might um, get worried about so the first thing is it has to be the kinematic body 2d node 
Um, so that was the line that we kept. Now we have from line 4 to 27 is what I pasted in. So these constants are just a way of us having control in one place for everything we want to do. So if we want to move it up and down, we can control that here. If we want to move how high it jumps every time we hit the up button, we can control that here. So currently I've set mine to 20, but I can change that to 40 if I wanted to. If you want to change the speed from left to right, you can change that here. Now, sorry, I was wrong about gravity. Gravity is is how how much of the physics body it takes. Um, this one here, the jump high, is how high it will jump when you click on the mouse button. Um, notice that it's minus 850. This is very deliberate. Go Godot. Um, when you go upwards, it's actually minus numbers. When you come downwards, it's actually plus numbers. It's a bit strange like that, so you have to keep that in mind. Now, whenever you type vector2, please note that the V is a capital V. Also, please note that these are uppercase, so the uppercase U and uppercase P, and all of the constant variables are all uppercases. So whenever you're using them, just keep that in mind, that they're all uppercases. So all the magic happens in this function process here. So we have another variable called motion, which is linked directly to this vector 2. Plus equals gravity, so it allows us to take consideration of the gravity and, and kind of be controlled by a little bit of pull and push in the gravity, which is great. Um, gives it a bit of a natural feel. Then we have this if statement here. So please be aware of the ease indents. So you see these little funny um, arrows with a line at the end. These are all indent markings. So you'll notice that they are indented. And what this does, every time you do a colon, it will indent it automatically for you, which is great. Um, sometimes you will have to get rid of the indent by pressing backspace. So in places like this, where you want to create your elif. Um, that's pretty much all of the pitfalls. So this function here, or this if statement here, controls your left and right movement. And if you want to change the speed, if you want to make it faster or slower, you can just come up to speed and you can say change it to 400 and it will change both of these values instantaneously without you having to ever come back to this if statement. Um, this is on floor. This takes care of the jumping. So you, once again, if you want to change the jump height, you can just change it up here to say minus 1600 or something if you want to jump really, really high. And then finally we have this move and slide, which is what controls the whole thing and it allows our character to move. Okay, so pause the video and get this typed in. Okay, the next bit that we need to do then is to add the player to our levels. So if I just save this scene, so save all scenes, and we come back to the 2D. So I'm currently on level one. Um, and if I want to add my player to level 1, all I do is I press this link button. So make sure you're actually on this top node and then press the link button. And then go to where it says player.tscn, double click. And this will bring our player into the scene. And you'll also notice that it brings the camera in with it. So before I do anything else, let's just test that that worked. Okay, it should jump through the air. There we go. Now you are noticing that we have a little bit of a problem here with the background. Um, we'll try and fix that in just a second. But you'll notice that it moves and the camera keeps following it. So as we move around and as we jump, the camera will follow it around. So we just have to sort out that background. Now there's a really nifty trick for this. Um, you'll notice that this is the area that it's following. So theoretically, if we click on the background and we move it. Now I have locked the tile map and you might want to do that just by selecting it and pressing the lock icon. So if I come back to this and I move it into this camera and I can make it just a bit smaller. Now as it stands that won't actually work. So if I press play you'll see what happens and it'll actually the, the player initially will look like it's working and then it will jump out of the scene. There you go. So now it jumps out. So in order to make it work, what we have to do is we have to put the background onto the player. So it embeds, okay? So now it does this, you'll notice that we've lost the character. Um, but if we press play, you'll notice that we never lose the background now. So I press play and the background will stay in focus all the time. Um, if I move around and you'll see it's all kind of going, but the problem is, is the background is now in front of everything as well, which is causing us a couple of other issues. Let's close this 
and let's do the player and move the player to the very top okay right there so now when I press play um, we should still we should see the tile map now here we go there we go there's my tile map and it all works and you'll notice that it's all good we are seeing a bit of it there which is a bit annoying um, so we just need to do one more thing so click on the background and the one you want to come down to is this one that says visibility and where it says show behind P that's show behind parent if you turn that on you'll then see your character now we are seeing a bit too much so let's just make this a bit bigger just so that all we see is the background when we move around um, and that's the setup that's the stack that we need um, and the good thing about this is that background now will follow us all the way around the stage and we'll never see this horrible greyish background again so let's just press play and let's just test our character so far so here we go I'm jumping okay fantastic and there we go that's the end of my scene um, and I'm happy so far we can obviously improve this but that's where we're at so far the final thing then is you just need to do exactly the same as that to all your other levels so let me just show you one more time so if I come to level 2 and I come to this top level and I press this link button and we're gonna link this player scene so there he is and then we're gonna drag the player to the top and then we're gonna attach this background to the player and then we're going to come down and we're going to change the visibility of the background so that it goes behind. And with this done, if we want to, we can make this background smaller, which is completely up to you. As it stands, it would have been completely OK, but just so it fits the same thing as my last one, I'm just going to make it smaller. You know, it doesn't matter if you want to make that as big as you want. It really doesn't matter. So let's just save all of our scenes, so save all scenes. And let's just run this one by clicking on this button here. okay here it comes and now we're here and we can go through it doesn't look as good as the first one because we've got this this horrible kind of brick wall that's following us I'll show you how to fix a few things like that I probably should have chosen a plain a more plain background to be fair oh, I can't actually get up there okay well we might have to change the jump height as well we found a, a bit of a glitch with my no no we got up there bit of a, a tricky one but we've done it Okay, so that brings us to a close on this particular lesson. So get your character created, and then in the next lesson, I'll show you how to move the character between scenes.